Okay. All right. Go. All right. Hi guys, so we are here today at the Aloft Hotel, and this is where PhotoCon is going to take place this year. I'm here with Robert Trayvon. <laughs> so we wanted to talk to you today about our jobs and what we primarily shoot, and what lenses work best for those particular jobs. So Robert, why don't you go ahead and start us off? Oh, I get to start off? You get to start off. Well, that's perfect. Well, I'm Robert <laughs> Trawick with Trawick Images and Trawick Images Workshops. And uh, I have to say, I love hanging out with Leah. She's an amazing photographer. Uh, we were Instagram friends for many years yeah. and then decided on the message, like, hey, let's get together for coffee. Yeah, and we've been doing it for, what, five years now? Yeah, it's been like five years. Coffee it's been a long time. At, yeah, coffee at least at least once a month. At least once a month, yeah. sometimes quicker. Yeah. But, uh, so we're both speaking at PhotoCon, and we wanted to make a little video because... I love her so much that I switched to Fuji because of her. Aww. Thanks. Okay, not not really, but I'm gonna just <laughs> let her know that. Yeah. So basically, I'm a uh, full-time photographer. I shoot weddings, commercial, uh, lots of headshots, lots of different uh, artistic projects. I'm trying to do more fashion and mm -hmm. follow my mentor, Leah, because Leah shoots amazing fashion. And, I haven't uh, in a while, but you know. Yeah, because I mean, she passed the torch on to me. I did, you know. I, the weddings have pretty much taken over my life, so. Yeah, and the weddings have really been hurting my body a lot. <laughs> yeah, probably me too, which is why I'm standing right now and not sitting. Well, I thought so. she was standing because she's taller that <laughs> <No>. way. <laughs> So yeah, I shoot Fuji. I switched over about two years ago. It's my second year shooting Fuji full time, and the way that happened is uh, I was a Nikon shooter for a lot of years, mm -hmm. and Nikon and Fuji have always had a relationship, uh, pretty good. And I've shot some Fuji cameras in the past that were film, mm -hmm. uh, like the uh, the medium format. God, now I completely remember, completely forgot about the model. <laughs> But it was the uh, it was the six by six Fuji. It was really awesome. Right. And uh, Leah showed up to the coffee shop one time with this X one hundred. Yeah, and that was back in like what two thousand fifteen. It has been a long time. Yeah, it, it was at least five years ago. And it had that rangefinder look. It yeah. had all the dials. It was so sexy. It was cool. And I just. I salivated over that camera a lot, <laughs> and when the uh, the F came out, was it the F? It was the F, and then it was the S, and then it was oh, the, the T. Oh, the S, the S, and then the F. Yeah, I, it was. I think I had the S and then the T. Right, right. And I kept sort of following the food chain and like upgrading and stuff, and that was really exciting. And every time I upgraded, I would show Robert, and of course, you know, we'd have a big discussion about it and everything, and. Uh, then I got more interested in getting a camera with interchangeable lenses. Right, so right. So then absolutely. I got the X-T1. And Did you get the X-T1? Is yeah. that the first one? Yeah, I had the X-T1. I bought it used off of eBay and loved it. And that was the first camera that I actually took to a wedding and, and shot. And I used it for actual wedding photos. Wow. Yeah. So I actually purchased her original X100. This is first generation. So this yeah. thing is 10 years old yeah. at least now. Yeah. And I would take it to a wedding just as a, um, just a candid shot because mm -hmm. it had the leaf shutter so it was completely silent. Right. And I would just run around and shoot black and white. And I had a bride ask me, hey, can I see that shot you took of my aunt at the table? And mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, absolutely. Took a look at it. And she says, oh, I want to make sure that's in my wedding album. And I kind of cringed mm -hmm. and thought, Oh, I don't know if that's going to work. But I said yes. Yeah. And we actually put it in the wedding album, and she loved it. So I kind of started considering then, like, these lighter cameras that are quieter at a wedding for candidates, mm -hmm. when I would bring the big Nikon out with the flash and the big lens, mm -hmm. as I would approach a table at a reception, people would start fixing themselves up because the right. photographer's coming. Right. But when I brought a small camera like this, it was no big deal. Less intimidating. You know? Less intimidating. Yeah. So that caused me to get on that train, and shortly after that, I was at PhotoCon with Leah, mm -hmm. and I saw her over at the Fuji booth, and um, yeah. she had all these cannons in boxes that she was turning yes, in. Yes, I, yeah, I, I wanted them to look at all of our gear first, and the next day I brought everything in, and we traded all of our Canon gear, all of our lenses, we had two rolling bags full of equipment we had two of every single lens and we had five canon bodies and we turned all of that in and we 
officially switched to Fuji. And so what? So when you did that, I'm going to be the interviewer here just for fun. Yeah. <laughs> so when you did that, um, so what's the first thing that you noticed right away that helped your photography or maybe your workflow? What helped me right away was the the viewfinder. It's such a tremendous change from Canon, and I'm not familiar with Nikon, but I'm assuming Nikon is Same very thing. similar to Canon. So. Um, Fuji, when you when you look through that viewfinder, it is so easy to make adjustments right there on the spot without having to chimp and like pull the camera away from your face and you know look at the shot and waste time doing that and then bring it back up and make some changes and then look pull it back down again and, and look at it again. It's just it's so much quicker and more efficient and you get you know when you look through that viewfinder and you take that shot, what you take is exactly what you're gonna get. You know, honestly, I was – that was one of the things that I really thought that mirrorless cameras was just like a mm -hmm. toy. Mm -hmm. Like this is just a fad. I mean it's basically an iPhone with the lens. Right. And I really kind of was turned off by it. And I thought if you're a professional, you got to shoot a digital SLR. Right, exactly. And then once I started using the X100, and it did not have that feature. Mm -hmm. But then I picked up an X Pro 2, mm -hmm. which is my favorite. This is my X Pro 3, mm -hmm. but it's the rangefinder style. Right. I was blown away. Uh, I felt like I was cheating. Yeah. It was so easy that I didn't have to chimp. Yeah. And I was more involved in the process of shooting, and it wasn't like, take a shot. Oh, no, no, that's too dark. Let's do it again. Right. I was more involved with my client, and yeah. I really liked that interaction much better. Right, and the interaction is so much more smooth. I mean, even when we have 20 people lined up for formals, we're able to quickly see, I can I can look in there and see if anyone's blinking, if I missed a shot, let's do it again really quick, and I know that everyone in front of me is wondering, how in the heck does she know that information so quick? How does she know that I blinked? But it's so fast, and it's so just quiet, and it's like really on top of its game, that, I mean, to switch for me now, to switch to anything other than Fuji, I just, I couldn't see myself doing that. Yeah, I, I picked up a couple of digital SLRs in the past helping some students, and I pick them up and I go, oh my God, how, how do you shoot this I know, thing? it's so heavy. It's yeah. so heavy, it's yeah. so cumbersome. Yeah. And you're constantly having to chimp the background, and, and just, I, it just really blows me away. So what other things have you done in your workflow? Because I, I know that your last video talked about just like three lenses that you shoot at right. a wedding. Right, yeah. I have a whole case of stuff over here still. I think I'm I a know. gear hog. Well, you know, we we I sort of felt like a gear hog with Canon. Like we had two of every single lens, and each lens was so big and heavy, and I loved them all, and they worked great. But they're very, you know, like I said, we had two tremendous rolling bags that we would take with us to every single wedding, and you don't realize how cumbersome all of that is, and how much space it takes up in the back of your right, car. Right. And then when you add a photo booth to it and you add your light stands and all of your lights and then pretty soon you're driving a bus just to get to a wedding, you know? No so, law about that. Yeah. I mean, with this, um, you're really able to streamline all of the equipment that you own. So like, like I said in my last video, I really love the 56. I mean, it's a wonderful portrait lens and it's just, it does such a great job. It's beautiful glass. It too. really it's is. It's sexy. It's yeah. very sexy. And it's weather sealed, which I also think is super important. Um, we have shot weddings in the pouring rain. And not have to worry about and it. And not have to worry. I mean, the only thing I'm worried about is my makeup running down my face, but... I don't have to worry about that. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, he doesn't, but... <laughs> um, the other lens that I really love more than anything is my 23 millimeter, And... I sort of did what you told me to do. Oh, you did? Okay, so do share. I took over 900 photos with this lens, the wedding that we had just this last Saturday. Just with that lens? Just with this lens. And so this is definitely my most used lens from formals to um, taking shots of the bride when she's getting ready bye, bye. Uh, to you know taking panoramas of the reception space. I whoa, can whoa, take whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, photos. Hey. You're taking panoramas? Oh, yeah. Wow, she yeah. just one-up me again. Ah. I cannot believe this. Yeah, I mean, I can take three beautiful photos and stitch them all together, and the 23 gives me that extra width so that the panorama, you can get just a really great idea of the space 
And you know, brides like to look back and see the room that they right, are Right, right, right. So, I mean, I do yeah. wide rooms, and that's why I put mine on here, because I love this 10 to 24. Mm -hmm. It's a constant F4. It has image stabilization. Mm -hmm. They call it optical image stabilization. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot of this with this, but, you know, it, it does distort if you get something up close. Right. So I have to be careful of the angle I choose at the venue when I'm getting that wide shot. Right. I've never even considered doing a panel. Of, yeah, it's a oh lot. Oh my God, I'm doing that on my next wedding. Yeah. So my and next you know, couple next month, you're getting a panel. That's pano. right. And also the cool feature about the Fuji is that if you switch, or if you, there's a, a, a setting in there for panoramic. Yes, and yes. And you can actually shoot amazing you know, yeah, and, and I still haven't gotten, I've done a few of those, mm -hmm. uh, like shooting the thunder because it's so wide, mm -hmm. and it's, you you push and hold and basically like spin your body, right. and it just stitches it together. It does. It's now, like magic. Shane did do that with me this last week. He got a picture of me taking a picture of the bouquet, but the problem was, and I didn't realize it, is that because you're moving and you've got that button pressed, if I move in the photo, oh, it's it's yeah, it's not going to take the photo right. So it actually looks like I have two heads <laughs> in the photo. So I think you should leave the comments below uh, and let's gosh. get the two-headed Leah photo online. I don't know if that's such a great idea. I think it'd but they be do great. say two heads are better than one, so I don't know. <laughs> I think that'd be fantastic. Yeah. So. Um, those, so this is your main kit that you're using? This is my main kit, and like I said um, earlier, this I use for the ceremony. Um, it is a wonderful lens, and I also use it for portraits too, but really it's mainly just for the ceremony so I can get close-ups, you know, down the aisle. Um, you know, one thing that I, I really like about this lens, and and there's so many things about Fuji that I really love because they really listen to their to their users right. and try and develop things. Is the pedal lens hood on this mm -hmm. actually has this little cutout, and when you pull this cutout, I'm not sure if you can see it on the video, but there's a little door that slides out that provides a window. And what that's for is when you have a polarizer filter mounted on your lens, you can stick your finger in here and rotate it. You don't have to go through the front. Oh, that's nice. Less so fingerprints, right? So it's less fingerprints. Yeah. So I love how something that simple on a lens hood can make me go, oh, Fuji's, <laughs> Fuji's thinking about me. Fuji loves us. Yeah. yeah so it's really great. Yeah. So what about drawbacks? Because I'm sure that every time anyone switches to a different system, there's always going to be things you have to get accustomed to, or maybe you can't get the right gear, or you're having to change your workflow. Did you find any kind of negatives that you had to get over with switching to Fuji? Well, I was using, um, we had all of our lights set up through Paul C. Buff. We had the Alien Bees. And I could still stick the trigger on this camera and trigger the light, but we found that you know, they, they are corded, so that right, was a right. limitation. Um, we went to the 8200s, and those were a fantastic change. So, But the thing with lighting is you do have to make sure that the triggers are compatible with Fuji. You can't just go out and buy any light. You have to make sure this is going to work. And I have found that there are a lot of lights to this day that still aren't compatible with this camera. So, Yeah, that, that has been a draw, drawback. I shoot a lot of flash photography and... Uh, it would be great if Fuji would make a studio flash with yeah, a lot of power. Nice. So Fuji yeah. guys, listen to us. Come out with the new Fuji 500. Yeah. You know, high speed sync, studio light, battery powered. Needs to be able to have a thousand frames full power. You know, something like that. But I'm having the same issue. At, um, I always tell people that Fuji's like an Alfa Romero. <laughs> okay, it's very fun to drive. Yeah. You're in a very narrow, small cir circle of friends that right. that own this camera or drive that car. But if you decide to go to AutoZone to get some parts, they're just going to say Forget no. Forget it. Yeah. Nikon and Canon are always going to get all the cool third-party stuff first. They will. Just like there's no third-party lens manufacturers making anything for Fuji. No, there's not. You have to get strictly fru Fuji lenses. Um, the other drawback that I did find was having using an on-camera flash okay yeah let's talk about that I did buy the Fuji flash uh, Fuji does make a flash yeah the EF 500 right 
I did not have good luck with that. Uh, I had to keep sending it back. It just did not work well for me. Um, I was at a few weddings and the flash actually broke and did not flash. So I do have to use the Yang Nuo flash for. Or yeah, I use yeah. the Godox flashes. Right. Those work really good. Yeah. So and they do well. Yeah, that's that's what we use. So there have been some things that I've had to change with Canon. I could use the Canon flash and it would work great. Never had any problems, but. Um, you know, there are some things that I've had to substitute just to be able to make this camera work. So Yeah, so there's some third party things. Uh, like right now I'm working with Tether Tools. Mm -hmm. uh, they're one of my partners and uh, their new Air Direct isn't completely Fuji film compatible. Mm -hmm. Well with with the uh, it will work with Fuji film, but my computer runs Catalina because mm -hmm. I'm working on a Mac mm -hmm. and that still has some issues with it. Right. Uh, so there's some tethering issues I'm working with. Now, with the cord, like a champ. Right. One thing that I had a problem with the Nikon, and you just get over these things after 30 years of shooting, when you plug in a cord, a tether cord to a Nikon, mm -hmm. it immediately disables the card. Oh. No images are shot to the card. It only goes to the computer, which is okay most of the time, but I like having backups. Right. And honestly, with the Fuji, there's multiple ways of tethering. It's just in the menu. The menu system is pretty incredible, yeah, very in-depth. it is great. So there's a lot of things that I've had to get over pretty quickly, and it's just like the Flash. There's not a lot of people that offer things for, for Fuji for mm -hmm. Flash. Uh, Third-party manufacturers, I'll see like really cool bodies. You know one that's really bugging me a lot, and I know it's probably not gonna make a lot of difference to many people, um, when I had my Nikon, I had color-coded caps for my lenses, oh. like orange, blue, right. yellow. You can't find those for Fuji. Yeah, I mean, there are. I have to have my lenses in my bag placed in a certain row so that I know exactly, you know, Which what one I'm grabbing. Is yeah, because yeah. Yeah, but you, if you go to Amazon or any of these other things and just type in color lens caps for Nikon, you can get them in everything. Yeah. You type in Fuji. You get zero. Yeah, zero. There's no options. It's it's disappointing. It is very disappointing. So uh, speaking about Photocon, you traded all your Canon gear in at Photocon. I traded all my Nikon gear at Photocon. Yeah. And we all switched to Fuji. And yeah. Photocon is coming to the Aloft Hotel in two weeks. 18 days. <laughs> 18 days. Yeah, I'm excited. I am still working on my presentation. I want it to be perfect. Oh, it so, will be perfect. I have no doubt in my mind. Well, I, I ran through it yesterday, and I'm at an hour and 45 minutes, so I was really worried that I wasn't going to be able to reset time, but I, I'm i going to do it. Just talk really fast, just like I do when I'm in a classroom, and I can go through <laughs> really quick, and it's okay. I'm going to ask a lot of questions. So. Uh, oh, my yeah. God. It's going to be... And so tell us a little bit about your program for Photocon. Okay, so my program is about the five main workflows I use to get through a wedding. Now, this includes from the time that I first hear from a lead before she books to the time that she actually does book and then I start sending her information to prepare her for her wedding day. Oh, so this is the workflow, like client yeah, lead workflow. Yeah, it encompasses the moment someone books to the moment I present their final gallery to them for their wedding. Wow. Yeah, so, so I'm gonna and go through everything. With, with weddings, so this is a wedding yeah. type workflow. It is, but if you do other types of photography, you can substitute wedding for, you know, any other job that you do, fashion or whatever. It, it's general enough that you can use it for any business with your clients. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be teaching some hard light portraits, which is really funny because a lot of people out there have already hit me up saying the portraits or the, the photos I submitted for my samples mm -hmm. were not hard light. Yeah. I'm going to change your mind about hard light photography. Yes, we're going to do some. But there's the photo that I submitted of Aspen, and uh, she is in uh, a field on a chair, and I would consider that a hard light portrait because I filled her in with a single flash with no modifier. That's awesome. I can't wait to see so that. So this is going to be kind of fun, and I don't care what the weather is. We're going to go outside and rock Yeah, that. and I love hard light. I mean, I had my, my headshot up for years, and, and, you know. Yeah, but you didn't use the headshot I took of you. Yes, I know. I need to go and download all of those images. I've been so busy working on my Photocon presentation. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. 
That's yeah. it. She's so nice, she doesn't want to say, it's, Robert, your headshot sucks. No, it's just very stressful. I haven't done anything. I haven't even ordered the portraits from my daughter's school for her class picture, so. Do you, do you really do that? I, okay. I Let's take, talk about that. I take their picture every year, but I also feel like I want the picture that they took at the school. I want them to remember like how cute they were at the school that they were at. I know it seems ridiculous because I'm going to do it anyway, but I, I don't think it is because I've done it with my kids yeah. all the time. Is I'll order like the smallest package. Yeah. Just, just because, and, and I'm not judging the photographer there. I mean, if I had to shoot thousands of kids in right. one day, yeah. they're not all going to be portraits. It's going to be a very quick documentation right. shot. Right. Um, I like the goofiness of it. I just love it. I mean, the little look that they have on their face when you're not standing in front of them. Yes, it's a big difference. Yeah, it is. It is different. And I don't know. I just, I sort of like to have that memory of them too. Of course, everyone, you know, all of my daughters are like, no, don't, don't buy that picture. It stinks, you know, and I wasn't smiling right. And I want you to take my picture instead. But I just like that photo too. And it's our job as parents to embarrass our children. It is. I need something for the future that I can hold over their heads. We definitely need to do that. (laughs) All right. We better wrap up because we've both got things to do. But be sure to check out Leah at leahphoto.com. I'm at Robert. uh, Yeah, my name is Robert (laughs) at TreywoodImages.com. And check us both out at photoconokc.com. We'll put a link down in the show notes on both of our videos. And uh, if you want to hear some different news or different stories about all the wonderful things that Fuji can do, stop by and see us at Photocom. We'd love to answer your questions. Yes. Uh, th- yeah. And I actually have three Facebook questions from Kathy, Mark, and Thomas that I will be answering that they asked me on Facebook. So if you guys have any questions that you would like to ask me or Robert, please comment on this video and we will answer them. Anything yeah. about anything. I mean, you know. I'm an open book. <laughs> like what I would like to restrict book? it just to photography. And oh, okay, she's so. going to restrict hers. I'm open to anything. Yeah. And hopefully the coronavirus is not affecting your day. Yes, hopefully not. All right, so you guys have a great day. Enjoy it. Bye. Bye. And then we just turn.